Hello, this is Dr. Gage from First Second MRI, and this is a 12-year-old female who complains of obsessive compulsive disease. She has behavioral difficulties. She has constant pressure in her head on the left and a pain around the left eye. And she comes in to see if she has any structural anomalies that could be causing her symptoms. And on this view, we see that the left and right halves of the brain are symmetric. But we do see that this occipital horn and trigone of the left and right lateral ventricles are too big. So too much fluid here and here. We call this colpocephaly. And the ventricles are relatively parallel. Normally they come together and they touch at the midline, but this left lateral ventricle, right lateral vent ventricle don't touch. They're more widely separated and they have this parallel appearance. And they have this distension here in the back called colpocephaly. So this makes us wonder about maldevelopment of the midline structures that can cause the abnormal appearance of the ventricles. So let me look at a normal patient here to show the difference. This is another patient from the same day, much older. We see the left lateral ventricle here, right lateral ventricle, and we see that they're relatively uh, normal from front to back, the same size. And our patient here, we have this colpocephaly, the prominent occipital horns. And on this patient, we see that the ventricles um, touch the frontal horns and body here come together and we have this midline septum pellucidum separating the right and left lateral ventricles in our patient they are widely spaced and they're, they don't come together and the other thing is the third ventricle which is right here is high in position it comes between the lateral ventricles so all of these things go along with a diagnosis of maldevelopment of the midline structures especially the corpus callosum. So here's the front of the corpus callosum. That looks pretty good. But now we're going to go to another view to see it better. So we look at the corpus callosum best in the profile or sagittal view. And we see it right here. This is the corpus callosum. And it is abnormal. It's very small. Um, the front of it here, down at the bottom, this is called the rostrum. This is kind of small and blunted. This is the genu here where it makes a turn, like the knee. They call it the genu. And that looks normal in size. This is the body. The front of the body looks pretty good, but the posterior body back here is very small, very thin. And this back part here, the splenium is very small. And from front to back, it's too small as well. So we'll put up a normal exam here. This is that same patient from today. And we see that their corpus, corpus callosum is normally formed. We see the front of it here, good. It comes into a point, bigger. And the body is nice and symmetric from front to back. And there's that uh, splenium, which is nice and large. They have an incident little pineal region cyst back here, if you're wondering what that is. Now we're going to go to our patient. So a small corpus callosum. We call this partial absence of the corpus callosum. Now we're going to look at the pituitary gland. When we see this, we'll look for other midline anomalies. Sometimes patients will have a small pituitary gland. The patient has a normal-sized pituitary gland. We also will look on an axial view like this. For a couple other things, number one, the optic nerves, are they normal in size? Here's the right optic nerve, it looks good. Left optic nerve looks good. Also, we look for the front here. There's a uh, Falx cerebri, this uh, little band of fibrous tissue that separates the right and left um, frontal lobes. And that can be malformed or partially absent. And in this patient, we see that in this region here, I don't see that band of tissue. I see this little linear band here in the front looks good, but over here, I don't see it. And also, we see the gyri going across the midline. We call this interdigitation of the frontal gyri, and that's from partial absence of this structure. So this patient may have something called septo-optic dysplasia, which is a genetic anomaly that varies significantly from child to child. And the three components of septo-optic dysplasia are underdevelopment of the optic nerves. With the optic nerves, small patients have limited vision or sometimes uncontrolled or rapid eye movements. They also have sometimes hypoplasia of the pituitary gland, this structure right here that can lead to growth problems. They often have small stature. This patient has a normal pituitary gland, so they do not have that. And the third thing with septoctic dysplasia is the corpus callosum and other midline structures can be malformed. And this patient has this partial absence of the corpus callosum, so they do have this. So an interesting case of midline structural anomalies, possibly septoctic dysplasia. Thank you very much.